Let's learn about Muon Optimizer, the new best optimizer. The core of it is this Newton-Schultz iteration. So we will understand this to understand what Muon Optimizer actually does. So if you have some weights in neural network and you are trying to adjust those weights, so when they multiply input, you get the correct outputs. So when we are adjusting those weights, we have what's called update matrix, which after the back propagation, after calculating the loss and gradients and everything, this update matrix tells us we add that to the weights and it will push weights a bit closer to the correct weights that will give us the correct output when multiplied with the input. So update matrix is what we add to the weights to make them more correct. So the issue can happen when this update matrix has some of the rows or some of the values very large, not because those large values would necessarily reduce the loss. So those are not necessarily gradients that would reduce the loss. And they are not necessarily large because in that direction with that transformation, the loss would get reduced most. They can also be large just because we had some input numbers that are arbitrarily high. For example, if you have some inputs, uh, one, two and one thousand. Let's say this is just an extreme example so I can show you. If you calculate how loss changes as you change these weights, so one times weight and then you have a two times weight and thousand times weight, you will see that this thousand times the weight, as you change the weight, the result will change significantly. Not because uh, the great, uh, so, so this weight will influence loss and the output very strongly just because it's multiplying huge input number. Not necessarily or not because this weight is important, but just because it's multiplying huge input number. So because of the input number, this gradient with respect to this loss, this, sorry, this weight will be huge. So as you change this weight a little bit, the loss will change a lot. That is the output will change a lot. And when you subtract the, uh, the correct answer or correct output from the predicted output, then you will see that that loss will change a lot because the predicted output will change a lot with respect to this weight. So in this case, we will get a huge gradient for this weight, making us believe that we need to update this weight in this whatever direction gradient is showing in order to improve loss. But that's not the case. The gradient is huge just because we are multiplying with huge input number, which is arbitrarily chosen. And it will not necessarily improve our predictions and neural networks if we update our weight by what the gradient tells us. So the solution by Muon is to look at all of the rows of the update matrix and check the lengths and bring them back to one or expand them to one if they are lower than one. So the logic here is uh, we will neutralize all of the huge uh, vector lengths, all of the huge update matrix row lengths that happen due to this arbitrary number choice in inputs, for example. In other words, we will make, make each of the rows of the matrix pull equal amount in whatever direction it's pulling. So if it's pulling this way and this way and this way, and if this one is huge, just because of the arbitrary numbers, we will make all of them pull the same with the same strength in these three directions. And uh, it seems to me that this has some issues because actually maybe this one should be a bit larger. Maybe we should pull in this di direction a bit more uh, to make the loss go down. But the results show that 
usually it's better to just make them all same length as opposed to not changing them because I think there is no way for now to figure out how much we should actually let uh, this pool stronger and how much it's just because of the arbitrary numbers and how much is it's because of the improving the loss the performance so these people who invented muon as i understand they just tried all of this and found that it's just the best we can do is right now just put all of the uh, lengths to unit vector and it just better than uh, there is not no we don't know how to do it better so maybe somebody in the next research will improve upon this muon idea if you have time to tune only one hyperparameter, tune the learning rate. So right now I'm learning what I believe to be the most important part of AI and it's this back propagation and the gradient descent and all of this stuff and uh, optimizer. So when you improve something here, you improve the entire field of AI. And that's what happened with new muon optimizer. So we want to update neural network, but we don't want to make the update too big because the network might overfit and gradients might explode so the w weights can st uh, may start loss may start start diverging from zero from minimum start becoming bigger and bigger because the gradients w or sorry the weights w get bigger and bigger so we want to improve performance but keep changes smooth and stable not big and unpredictable so in the standard gradient descent the weights update how much we change weight to minimize loss is equal to the gradient times learning rate but muon and other optimizers are gonna change this so for example they can uh, orthogonalize normalize or rotate or ortho normalize the gradients before multiplying with the learning rate this is to uh, make the update uh, better in some ways so then after this transformation we want to actually check how much this new transformed update matrix is uh, similar to the original gradient because the original gradient was about to improve the loss to some extent maybe this new update that will improve loss even more by the way but this is some guardrail that will help us guess more because if the new updated if the new updated gradient or new up, uh, weight update matrix is too different from the gradient that might mean that for example we will not reduce loss too much or if it's too big it might make the network unstable but the way I understand it is uh, this will not for sure tell us that uh, it's like that either of them is better or worse but it can be like a red flag if it's too different if we changed it too much from the gradient it, the gradient was already calculated to update to minimize the loss it's from this block, by the way, deriving muon. We want to minimize the dot product between the gradient with respect to loss and the weight update because the gradient will show the direction of the ascent of increasing the loss. So we want to minimize the product. We want the opposite update. So this formula means that the average change in y the output is bounded by operator norm of the weight update times the rms size of the input x what does that mean so this del w is the maximum amplification this can produce on an input x so this is the maximum amplification and the real change the real amplification will be equal to the maximum or less so the output change is always less than or equal to the maximum stretch that the weight update can cause times the input size so the maximum stretching as we explained in one of the previous few of the previous videos when you multiply 
vector or matrix with another matrix, that matrix multiplication is the stretching or squishing or rotating of the space where that first matrix is. Then we have singular value decomposition of a matrix. That's very important for our optimizer. So let's understand it. Any matrix can be decomposed into three special matrices. Now let's talk about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So I explained that we can look at a matrix like a rotation of space. So what eigenvector is, is uh, when we apply that matrix to space, actually some lines in that space don't get rotated. So those could be seen as axis of rotation. So all of the vectors get rotated in some ways, in different ways, but some of the lines don't get rotated. So that's, those are eigenvectors. So for eigenvector V, it will only be stretched by this matrix. It will not get rotated as if you are multiplying it with a scalar. And this scalar is called eigenvalue. So if we have this equation, we put this to left side, we get this. Here we have this unknown eigenvector and eigenvalue is unknown, but we can use some tricks. So uh, it doesn't make sense that vector is zero because I think it would be trivial or it doesn't make sense because it should be a vector. I'm not sure. But later we will have this condition that vector is uh, the solution vector is different from zero are the eigen, uh, eigenvectors. So if the vector is not zero, then only makes sense that this is zero. This is equal to zero because vector is not zero. So we can just put this equal to zero. But what they put is determinant of this is equal to zero. So why is that? So I understand it now there is a vector that's multiplied with this matrix, the vector gets squished into zero, means that for that this matrix is gonna remove a dimension. So if we have a 2D space, this matrix must put that into a single line, the whole space, so this vector gets squished into a single dot. So in that process of squishing, if the vector is not perpendicular to the squishing motion, then it will not actually get squished into a dot. It will just get squished onto the line. But the perpendicular vector to the squishing motion will get squished into the dot. And that's, the, that's how we can find eigenvector and eigenvalue of this matrix. So we want to find first these eigenvalues and we can find it with this vector that gets squished. So if this is going to squish space, as I said, then the rule is that its determinant must be zero. Because that means that it will transform area to zero. That's what determinant, determinant shows how it will transform area. So when we know that this is zero, we will be able to find vectors that are not zero. So those would be eigenvectors. Good question. If determinant of this is not zero, what does that say about the solution for the eigenvector for this vector V? Can any non-zero vector V satisfy the equation then? So if you answer this, you will be a bit confused because Actually, neither of these, so either brackets or a vector, has to be zero. We, they can all be some numbers and it can still be result zero. And so this is because this matrix will transform this vector, squish that into zero area. So this doesn't have to be zero, it's just some transformation. So, but its determinant must be zero if we want to squish the vector. 
if it's erasing dimensions. In one of the next videos, we will be learning deriving muon, which is the best advancement in AI in recent time, the recent three years. So this just cut the AI training in half, this muon optimizer. So we will learn how they got this and the logic and math behind it.